Should children have to wait to sign up for lessons or sports? What do you think? I'm Nicolene Peck, and I'm the mother of four, previous foster parent of many. Boy, have I ever had children in a lot of lessons and sports. I also teach parenting through the lens of self-government all over the world. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to prepare your child to succeed in whatever lesson or sport they're pursuing. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to notice right when your child is excited about something and let them join in that activity. But sometimes it's best to tell them no. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the academic no and the social no, and when you should tell them no, what that can do for them and their overall excitement, and then also when it's a good idea to tell them yes and just dive in. The first thing we have to talk about is whose idea is it for this lesson or sport? Is it your idea or is it their idea? I remember my grandmother taught piano. She was a renowned musician and pianist and she said that she would always teach her grandchildren piano lessons for free. So because of that, my mom was like, woohoo, we are gonna have all of you guys take piano lessons. And so it was no question. We had to take piano. Every one of the five of us had to take piano, whether we liked it or not. Now, here's the thing is she did let us know that we couldn't take piano until we were seven. So many of us wanted to start piano beforehand. We knew grandma would teach us. We also knew older siblings were taking piano and that seemed really exciting. So I remember when I was five asking my mom, mom, can I please take piano? Can I please? And she said, nope, you can't take piano until you're seven. Grandma says you have to be good at reading first before you can take the piano. Now, I know not all musicians follow that, but that was one of my grandma's rules is that a person couldn't start until they were seven. I think unless they were a real prodigy, but she didn't do the Suzuki style. She did more of a classical style of piano training. So anyway, I had to wait until I was seven. This was a no. It was an academic no. And it made me want the piano. I would watch my brother play the piano. I would watch my mother play the piano. I would watch grandma play the piano. And I wanted to be able to sit at my other grandma's house and play for everybody because she always praised everyone who could play piano. And all I could do was sing little songs, but I really wanted to have that skill. So because I waited for two whole years before I was allowed to sign up, then it meant a lot more to me. So I actually think that waiting for my grandmother was actually smart. It made me want to do it. Now, later on, I got to the point where I didn't want to practice and I wanted to quit and my mom didn't let me quit until whenever, but that's a video for another day. In fact, I have another video all about should you let them quit or not, so be sure to find that one. But this video is all about when should you let them start. So are you the one that wants them to do it? My mother was the one that wanted me to do it, but then she got me to want to do it too. If your child wants to do it, then you really should look at following through. If just you want them to do it, you need to be sure that you understand the principle for why you're wanting to do that and hopefully help them develop a craving or a love for it if it's something you want them to accomplish. So if you don't play piano or any musical instrument, but you want your child to be musical, then what you'd want to do is go to a lot of concerts and things ahead of time and go hear people play the piano, get them in love with that. You want them to love good music, they have to be exposed to it. You're not going to, you know, let them listen to the wheels on the bus go round and round forever and then hope that they love piano music, right? If they were raised on pop music, which is something less than classical music, no offense to anybody out there, but it is in, in its intricacies and stuff like that, then they're not going to ever want that. 
So you have to decide what's the principle, why do they need it, how do I cultivate the love for it? But if you just force it, then you might not get the results that you're looking for. So keep that in mind. So when are they ready and what do, how do we do this academic no? We're gonna talk about that, but first click the subscribe button now. This channel is for you to learn all the things that you need for self-government for your family. So we're gonna talk about the academic no and how to help your child build excitement and a sense of follow through once you start that activity, whatever it is, the sport or the lesson, uh, the class maybe that they're wanting to take. Let's say they want to start taking a painting class and you feel like you're not sure if they are ready yet for the painting class. There is like this magical window of where you can say no and build more excitement and then it crosses over a line where they just decide they're never doing it again and you don't want to get to that place. If you want your child to take ownership for the class, the assignments in the class, the follow through, the practicing for the sport or the musical instrument or whatever it is, then you want them to be excited about it. If they come to you and say, mom, I really wanna do painting, say, that's great, honey. How about we watch a Bob Ross thing and see what we can do with it? See how good we are at painting. So you start testing it out and testing it out. And then you say, you know, he is so good. Wouldn't you like to learn from somebody like that? Yes, mom, I wanna take painting. Yeah, that would be really fun. I'll have to find a person. But in the meantime, let's just keep working on it. Maybe you and I can do painting with Bob Ross or whoever it is, whatever tutorial you're following. Maybe we can do painting for, you know, once a week, every Thursday night, me and you do painting for a little while until I find somebody that I feel like is the perfect person for us. So then you start looking, but you take your sweet time to make sure that the child is fully invested in this. It wasn't just a passing fancy that they're gonna be done within a couple of days. You'll know if you wanna test it out with them and they don't talk about it, think about it, work on it outside of the time that you're you know, doing it with them. If it's just a social thing with you or after they've done a couple of pictures, they're done, then you'll know it's probably not the best thing to start yet. You may be cultivating something that could come back around later. So then if they do continue to show an interest, then you finally sign them up for something. But having that no in place or that wait for a little bit, or if you say, yes, you can do that when you are nine, or you can do that after we take these other lessons first because before you can be on the swim team we got to first teach you how to swim so we're gonna do two weeks of lessons and then we'll go swimming all summer long and then if you want to sign up still for the age group swim team then we will sign up for the age group swim team and you can be on that with your friends so give them that no push them off just a little bit now another thing that can come with giving a no is they can start to make plans for themselves so you could say they could invest a little bit more into it, like even financially. You could say, how about you help earn some of the money for this by doing some jobs around the house? So you could kind of test to see how dedicated they really are. Do they want to do some jobs around the house, you know, for a few days to earn a little bit of money to maybe buy those tap shoes or those shin guards or something. And then you say, you buy the shin guards. And if you can buy the shin guards, then I will buy the shoes and pay for the, the team and all the other stuff with it. But I want to see that you really want to do this, you know, or maybe they practice soccer skills or something like that for a certain period of time and they put tally marks on a sheet. And then after they do so many hours of practice, then they get those shin guards and they earn them that way. You know, however you want to work it out, but that no really does motivate the child. Now here's the other thing. Sometimes an immediate yes though is just what is needed as well. So I had a son who really fell in love with barbershop music, that acapella harmony, it just spoke to him. And when he was 10 years old, he saw a concert that his grandpa performed in. In fact, I was actually in it as well. And he got a CD from this barbershop quartet group that was like world renowned, okay? 
and he went down in his room and he listened to the CD again and again and again, trying to pick out the tenor part in that CD. Cause you know, as a young boy of 10, that's all he could hit was the tenor, right? And so he was trying to key into that after days and weeks of working on this, he came to me and he said, mom, I want to sing barbershop. I will quit every sport. I will quit basketball. I will quit soccer. I'll quit all of it if I can sing barbershop. Now I knew he had been in his room working on this. He'd been putting in the practice. He'd been thinking about it, talking about it, singing it around the house in his spare time. He really wanted it. And he was willing to sacrifice all of his sports. You know what I did? I let him sacrifice his sports. I said, okay, talk to dad and see if he'll go with you because you got to have another guy to take you there as a sponsor. Otherwise you can't join this international group and you're going to have to try out and everything. And he'd been singing in choirs before this. He quit the choirs. He quit even after a while, some of his other music lessons, his individual voice lessons after a while. He stayed with him for a while, but he quit the choir and then he went and tried out. But I did that immediately because I could see it truly was something deep in him that he needed and that he wanted right then. And he was willing to make a big sacrifice. And I wanted him to see that his sacrifice was either worth it or not. And the only way for him to see that was for it to immediately happen. So we immediately took action on that one. And it was one of the best things we did to this day. He is 27 now and he still loves to sing the acapella harmonies and he's been in so many acapella groups. It's been amazing. It was a key part of who he became as a person and I felt it. Now as a parent, remember I said, you get to feel inspiration for your child. Nobody gets the inspiration like you do. So if you feel, Ooh, this one's a key part to who they are, then just jump on it. But if you think, Ooh, this is something that they're getting interested in, but let's see if we can get them excited about it, then maybe give them that no. It is okay to take either approach if you feel a certain feeling about what that child needs. Your inspiration as the parent is the top priority for the child. If you've enjoyed this video, I know you're gonna love my next video, which is should parents let their kids quit sports or lessons? So definitely look at that video next so that you can decide when enough is enough.